Senator Charles Trump joins us via telephone. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Rob, Matt, Joe. I'm doing great. Enjoying this food all by myself. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, that's so good. <laughs> Send some in. What's for breakfast this morning, Charlie? <laughs> no, I, I already had breakfast. I am not uh, going to uh, eat while we talk. I appreciate that because that doesn't sound too good. It might sound delicious, but it doesn't sound too good. Are you a breakfast person, Charlie? Some people are and some people aren't. I am. It's the most important meal of the day. That sounds like a billboard. How about you, Matt? Are you a breakfast guy? I've been doing the intermittent fast for several months, so I tend not to eat until probably around 12 noon and then wrap up somewhere during the 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock hour and then wait and eat again at 12 the next day. So I love breakfast food, though, Mm -hmm. but rather than eat it at 7 or 8 in the morning, I may eat it at 12 noon, 1 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whenever. How about you, Joe? Something quick and easy. That's it. All right, out the door. Yep. He wastes no time. I, I don't eat, I, like on a weekend, I'll eat in the morning, but right. being here at you know, five and waking up at three, whatever, there's yeah. no eating breakfast no, at that hour. You don't want to no. eat that hour. Yeah. Charlie, let's talk. Uh, we were dealing with certificate of need laws yesterday as we had Senate President Craig Blair on the program. And while we were involved in these discussions, uh, Delegate Mike Height said, get in touch with Charlie Trump when it comes to certific- certificate of need laws. This is where you want to start. So, Charlie, you've come highly recommended here by Delegate Height. Well, that's uh, flattering. I have no idea what the basis for that is. (laughs) But uh, I'm I'm happy to do my my best. All right. Well, let's talk first about certificate of need laws in West Virginia. I know other states have certificate of need laws uh, to varying degrees as well. Can you tell me the origins of these laws in the state and the, the need for them? Uh, sure. And, or at least a perceived uh, I, need for them. Well, I, I tell you, I think generally speaking, uh, you see certificates of need and requirements for certificates of need in areas of the law where there is monopolistic activity. You know, we, uh, we uh, characterize, uh, because it is, America's free market economy uh, for the most part. But there are certain, certain aspects uh, where uh, you, you can't have a free market and competition. And so as a substitute for that, when you have uh, an entity that has monopoly power, uh, every economist, uh, Milton Friedman all the way back, uh, will uh, you know, argue that you have to regulate monopolies because without it, uh, they would um, be able to charge whatever they chose without fear of competition for anything. And so where you, where you see certificate of need uh, start to arise uh, in, in our society, it generally began with things like utilities. Uh, so a good example of that, this is pretty basic, but a good example of that is you wouldn't want, it wouldn't be desirable or efficient for five different electric companies uh, generators and distributors of electricity uh, to have the power of eminent domain to be able to condemn rights away, build their own lines to everybody's uh, that that could serve everybody's house, and uh, and compete to provide electricity uh, to to each house. That would be remarkably inefficient and expensive. And so the way the government deals with that is. Uh, it, it grants monopolies to uh, provide electricity in a particular area, and so uh, and and those come generally with a certificate of need. Usually, some governmental entity has to get uh, the government, an agency of the government, to agree that there's a need for this particular service, whatever it is. And then what goes along with that is regulation of price. You have uh, uh, an electric company, which is the easy example, I think, for everybody to understand, has to apply, you know, here's what it's going to cost us to to produce this electricity and distribute it per kilowatt hour. This is what we propose to charge. And the government regulates and sets the price. All right, so Delegate Height was not incorrect. I think you did a pretty good job of explaining that, Charlie. So, next question on that. Yesterday, 
we had uh, a pretty, um, I'd say, lively discussion about certificate, certificate of need as it applies to trash hauling uh, in the area. And I didn't believe it when I heard it, but it did happen on this program where two and maybe three Republicans were actually stating that it was a good idea to have it in regards to the trash hauling in uh, in West Virginia, and specifically as we were talking about the Eastern Panhandle. So uh, I think you've done a good job of, the, of describing when certificate of need might be necessary, Charlie, but in regards to restricting competition, the need to regulate it becomes paramount then, as you mentioned as well, because if you don't regulate it, then you risk that whole monopoly situation. But but what is the harm in beginning to free that uh, that scenario in regards to maybe trash hauling in the Eastern Panhandle, as we did with the breakup of say the you know Ma Bell system, and now people have choice in utilities that they can get. Uh, you don't you're not simply limited to one utility selection in many communities. What is the harm in allowing a bit of a breakup of that in the trash hauling? Yeah, it, as you move away from traditional utilities. I'm going to say, you know, electric companies, uh, sewer service, where, you know, you wouldn't want 10 10 competing entities building sewage treatment plants and bearing lines in every, you know, uh, multiple lines in every neighborhood. Uh, As you move away from that sort of model, uh, you know, the questions get closer and closer. Uh, The the collection of... uh, Garbage municipal refuse is is really interesting. I will tell you what the the arguments are for certificate of need, uh, and that is that if you have multiple companies competing in a certain area, then there's necessarily duplication of costs. So think about you know a residential subdivision. Say you have three or four different companies sending buying buying trash trucks, insuring them, paying employees to drive the trucks, driving down uh, three or four different trucks from different companies, driving around the neighborhood in the same subdivision, competing with each other for the customers, uh, it creates some inefficiencies. It might, on a temporary basis, uh, cause prices to lower. And, uh, and, and when that happens, uh, you know, you think if people are making, quote, unquote, rational economic decisions, they're going to uh, buy, they'll choose to buy the service uh, that is the best uh, at the most competitive price. Uh, what you can un- end up with is uh, saturation of the market and companies going out of business. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing until until you get to the point where one company is successful in driving everybody out of business, you wouldn't want that company to have unfettered discretion in terms of its pricing. In other words, you have uh, with, with trash collection in West Virginia, uh, not, not a fully free market, but the same, it works the same way it does with electrical lines. Uh, the companies have to have their tariffs. What they're allow- allowed to charge for picking up our trash is regulated and set by the government so that consumers don't get gouged. So it's ultimately it's a balance. You could do a pure free market system, take out all the regulation, but if at the end of the day you end up with one company that survives – with no ability to limit or cap what they can charge, then the consumer uh, is in a bad spot. Uh, And, uh, you know, there are other undesirable consequences of that sort of thing, too. Uh, If it, when, when trash service becomes too expensive, unreasonably expensive, say no one else enters the market to compete with the high priced trash provider, then people will do things, they'll be incented economically to do things we don't want them to do, which is throw their trash over a hillside into a hollow. And, uh, you know, we've made the decision that we don't want that in West Virginia. We want, we want people to dispose of their trash and refuse 
in a way contemplated by the law, and that is regulated and licensed landfills, recycling operations, that sort of thing. Matt Miller. So, Charlie, let me ask, what is the process then if I'm a resident of Berkeley County and I'm looking at the growth in Berkeley County, I may be looking at my own service collection, and I'm thinking, you know what, there's a need for more than one or two. I'm not sure how many officially are in Berkeley County. I believe it's what, Waste Management and Apple Valley. So if you say, hey, I want to start this third one, what's the process then in that certificate of need to show that there is a necessity to have my business? So uh, it's a great question, Matt. And uh, the process uh, that the law uh, sets out now is that someone who would want to enter the market and compete has to apply first to the State Public Service Commission for a certificate of need and and necessity, certificate of necessity, and establish uh, that there is a need for an additional player in that market. Now, let me say this, and and the the trash is the trash refuse and hauling is a little complicated because uh, there are interstate commerce rules that come into play. And there have been cases out of West Virginia that have been decided by the federal courts which uh, hold that a person can enter the market and take West Virginia trash to points outside of the state of the West outside of the state of West Virginia, outside of its boundaries for disposal. And those those haulers are essentially uh, exempt uh, from the requirement that they get a certificate of need. So you have uh, the interstate collection and disposal of trash treated as if it were uh, monopolistic and regulated prices set by the state government, but at the same time, uh, the law allows uh, for uh, other market entrants uh, that are taking trash to points beyond the boundaries of West Virginia. So are there specific guidelines that, say, the PSC uses in looking at that certificate of need to determine, yes, we believe that there is that need, and so you would be granted that opportunity to service the area and still dump here in West Virginia? Uh, Yes, and and generally what happens is these things end up in hearings. I've been involved in uh, one within the last year, uh, I've been involved in one hearing, and the question is always, uh, is there a need? And, and the, generally the PSC will assign an administrative law judge to take the evidence, and it, it comes in the form of testimony uh, from people who, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to make up hypothetical testimony. But say, so yeah, I put my trash out, and, uh, you know, two weeks out of four, the hauler doesn't pick it up. Uh, or, uh, you know, you can imagine other testimony uh, from people who use the service, uh, and and they will testify. That's how a, a new market entrant generally establishes need, by offering evidence that the current uh, incumbent providers of the service uh, is not adequate. It's not rendering adequate service for the citizens of the area. Joe Ferretti. Charlie, it's always good to talk with you. Uh, The perverse result, though, from the certificate of need system that we have here for hauling trash is that companies that are existing, uh, exist here in West Virginia, are doing business, have a certificate in hand. Anytime there is uh, an applicant, another trash hauler who wants to come into the market, the current trash hauler runs to the PSC and files an objection. And then the PSC has to review the situation to determine whether that new business can come in and compete. So uh, while I I understand your concerns about monopolistic behavior that the certificate of need system is designed to address, on the flip side of the coin, we also have current businesses operating with the the blessing of the state uh, agency acting as monopolies by objecting to other businesses coming in to compete. There, it's a barrier 
to competition. So it really is a, a, a quite a balancing test that has to take place here with the PSC to make sure that while we are concerned about monopolies, we also have to understand and appreciate that we are rewarding monopolies when they object to businesses coming in and offering competition. Oh, you make a great point, Joe, and I, I can't uh, argue or dispute uh, what you what you said. Uh, I guess. I guess the concern is if you had if you had no certificate of need uh, requirement, and it were wide open, anybody could just enter the market and decide I want to be a, uh, a blank. You fill in the blank. Whether it's I want to be an electrical provider, I want to be a trash hauler, I want to operate taxis. Uh, you know, those are some of the things that uh, the state imposes a certificate of need requirement for. Um, then you you could have free free open unbridled competition. Uh, the concern would be that if it ended with one person standing, there'd be no mechanism then to uh, you know limit what they can charge. Well, then let, let's go to that issue because um, such is my life. But I, this morning I got up and read one of those federal court decisions you referenced, where a, an Ohio trash hauler challenged the certificate of need requirement to come into West Virginia, get trash, and haul it back to Ohio. And as you stated correctly, uh, the courts have looked at the certificate of need under those circumstances with disfavor. Uh, in a, and a pretty exhaustive opinion by one of the federal judges in the Southern District, the, uh, the, the judge pointed out that we are one of two states in the country that require certificate of need applications for trash haulers. And so I know the legislature is oftentimes fond of looking at how other states do things in terms of what public policy makes sense for West Virginia. Have we looked at other states' experiences that have a wide open market for trash hauling to see if there is a concern that eventually we get down to one trash hauler who then can charge whatever they want? Or do we have that kind of uh, data to perhaps understand what it might be like to not have a certificate of need requirement? Yeah, in in fairness, I will say to you, uh, not recently. I don't think that the that has been the subject of any recent or uh, study or examination by the legislature. There was there was some work done in that area about 15 years ago, uh, and there was a time when the CON, the Certificate of Need process in West Virginia, and the rules regarding uh, garbage and refuse hauling. Uh, was uh, much tighter than it is now uh, for a time, uh, and the legislature did change the law about 15 years ago to permit this, to permit uh, the picking up of commercial or industrial waste on a more open market basis. It used to be the rule was if you got a certificate of need, then you had to pick up everything, everybody, you got to serve every customer. Um, and that's still true, although there is some competition that is allowed now for the picking up of commercial or industrial wastes. Uh, and, you know, I remember, because I think I was still in the House of Delegates when, when that came about, but it, um, it was very controversial at the time because the trash haulers who had the certificates said, well, wait a minute, this is some of our most uh, profitable business. We can pick up large volumes of garbage and trash in one place as opposed to, you know, a household's six hefty bags, uh, but dumpsters full, and you're going to allow companies to come in and cherry pick the most lucrative aspects of the business. That was the argument against it, which did not prevail. So we have in West Virginia now a little bit of a hybrid where there is um, some competition for the larger uh, refuse customers. You know, and I, I agree with you. I, 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 it always worries me a little bit when you see West Virginia out of step with the rest of the country in, in many areas. And this may be one. It may be worth taking another look at. What one concern is, is, you know, the rural nature of our state. Now, Berkeley County is becoming uh, less and less like that, but 
there are still places where uh, in a free market, uh, in a wide open, unregulated free market, there would be people uh, to whose house no company would go. You know, we're not going out this last mile out that hollow every week. It's not worth it. It's not economically, you know, we lose money driving out to, you know, Charlie Trump's house way out in the boonies to pick up his trash. And then, you know, the uh, concern or analysis is always, well, what happens then? You know, is that person going to take his garbage and throw it somewhere? Well, Um, Charlie, would it not be possible if you're going to permit a business to do operations in the county to require them to serve all county members as a, as a, pro, sure. as a prior condition to sure. doing business and, in the county? And that, that is the requirement now under the certificate of need. But right. You're, so you're not talking about a free market wide open system in that scenario. You're, you're talking about a regulated system where the trash company, the, the incumbent provider has to serve every household. Right. You know, they, they if a customer in the county, if you want to do business in Berkeley County, you got to make sure you serve everybody, but you're welcome to compete for the business. I, I, it, uh, that's not possible to label that as free market capitalism? Well, it it's, it's a hybrid because you have to have, government then would have to have some mechanism to enforce that. Right, but, so, but government enforces all, all businesses in some mechanism one way or the other, regardless whether it's you can't discriminate against people coming into your business or, you know, whatever. Well, right, and that's, that's, sort, of, that's sort of what the certificate process and the certificate of need, that's part of what its objective is, is to provide that mechanism or hammer uh, to um, sanction for the PSC to sanction a company, or maybe even take away its certificate if it's not doing that which the law requires it to do. So it sounds to me if like you have a wide open, unregulated uh, economy in that area. What it what is the sanction? You you're not you can't take away its permission to haul trash because the government doesn't have to give permission to haul trash anymore, right? Sounds to me then, Charlie, like the idea is if if I have the certificate of need and that tells me I have to service everybody, and that includes the far out areas that really cost me a lot of money, so I have to make my money in these these more populated areas, the certificate protects me from somebody else coming in who says, look, I don't care about all that way out there and taking the business in the area where I actually make money and leaving me now in a situation where I, I can't stay in business because my only clients left or those that are outside of the the money-making area that's essentially correct okay final question joe yeah i I was just a comment i I know in in the state of ohio they the regulation is at the county level with county health departments they issue the license for the haulers they make sure that there's you know tipping fees at the county landfill is is set appropriately for the haulers to bring the trash there and the county at the local level assures that, that the rural areas are covered when these people come in and they seek an application to do business. Now, but Charlie's right. When this came up and, and, and that one federal case I read, it, the concern was that counties like Pocahontas County would have no haulers because no one wants to service a, a huge county with 8,000 people, which is what Pocahontas County is. So the certificate of need requirement at the state level was to assure that those people would almost be forced to provide services to places like Pocahontas County if they wanted to also go serve Lewisburg or some of the more populated areas in that part of the state. Uh, it's kind of, a, as Charlie said, it's kind of a hammer uh, over their head to make sure that they do provide those services. Charlie, final thought? No, it's, you know, it's, it's not just garbage. We had, the legislature's been through for the last eight years, lots of looks at and revisions to certificates of need in the context of medical care. You know, that's a big thing mm-hmm. that West Virginia uh, uh, has. We've done some reforms on it, but uh, 10 years ago, if a hospital wanted to repave its parking lot, it had to get uh, permission 
from uh, through the certificate of need process for the government to be able to do that. We have um, we've relaxed some of those rules to try to encourage competition, and uh, you know that has pluses and minuses. Uh, the uh, you know I think in Berkeley County at least we're seeing some pluses. We're seeing what looks to me from uh, some distance like a degree of healthy competition now between WVU and Valley Health uh, that I think in the long run is going to benefit the citizens of the Eastern Panhandle to have two providers that both want to compete for the same patients. One of the things that makes that possible is the growth that we've enjoyed, the population growth and the addition of new people all the time who need health care. And uh, other parts of the state, sadly, don't have uh, that demographic dynamic. Charlie, thanks so much for your time this morning. I do appreciate it. Gentlemen, great to talk to you as always.